Okay, I think I'm good. I think I'm good. Uh, calm down a little bit here. Um, well, the testing helped anyway. Uh, this is a review about the EPZ TP20 Pro, the new version. It's very, it's a very interesting emotional review, um, and I'll explain why. So, here's the original. Uh, EPZ20. I, I love. I, I when I first picked this thing up and I went, oh yeah, this thing is so freaking heavy. It's amazing. And I was thinking, the first thought to my head is like, man, this is the perfect travel companion if you're on public transit and somebody's bothering you and you could just like right and completely knock them out i mean this thing was like 55 grams of solid uh, alloy zinc uh, case uh the original one had a little gain switch and it had a play pause up and down button and a single led with two colors now that's all fine and dandy. Uh, on this side, it had uh, 3.5 single-ended, and it had a 4.4 balanced. Uh, Output-wise, uh, what did this one have? 121 uh, milliwatts, and the balanced had 151. So just slightly a bit more power at 32 ohms. Now... Put that down again. Box is similar. Comes with a little thing like that. Specs on the back. Comes like that. Dongle. Uh, which is a nice. You can choose between USB-C on both ends. Or USB-C and Lightning on the other end. And you got a choice when you purchase it. Also in the box uh, is this little card here. Uh, and on one side it's Chinese and the other side is English. 
Now, this is where some of the problem for me on this dongle came into play. Now, it has, I thought they upgraded a few things and on the little switch here, I mean, it has the same thing. So let me unplug this. So it has the gain switch on one side, it has a up down volume on the other side with a play pause function. And this was new, I thought, because it said ED indicator. Just to talk about that uh, ED indicator light on there. Now, I thought it was originally, it was a new feature for men my age, because it's a real issue, right? Uh, erectile dysfunction is, it, it's real, it happens, you know. And as I thought this was an upgraded feature on the, the new one, uh, I, I was a bit wrong, and I, I am embarrassed to share this with you, but I will, um, just so you don't have to go through the same thing. My heart was palpitating, it, it was. Uh, and the reason I say that is I was having a, a music session, I was having a chill session, listening to some Clapton, and all of a sudden the indicator light turned red. I mean, everything up to that point was great, right? I mean, fine, no issues. Uh, but then it turned red, and I kind of freaked out. Um, I checked, everything was good. And then I reached out to Canucks Audioholics and um, it's a sensitive subject, right? Um, but they were cool. I mean, as my friends, they were cool. And it, it turned out to be an aha moment, really, because at that point, um, t talking it over, um, they, 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 it just made me realize that maybe that's not an ED indicator, it was, a missing a it's a typo should have said led and so yeah it all kind of just clicked in at that moment okay well it's not it's not an ed dysfunction indicator light it's it actually i found out it when it turns red it's on dsd files anyway it's a good thing just letting you know that uh, in case this happens to you um it's it's perfectly normal and uh it's a good thing when it turns red all right so should say led not uh, uh ed indicator all right so thank you Just sharing heart palpitations there for a while though. one of the things um that the upgrade from the tp20 versus the tp20 pro is that the buttons were flush on the TP20 and well pretty flush and what they did is they raised them up quite nicely on the TP20 Pro and it has a better clicky and solid feel to it as for size they're virtually the same except for the TP the older one had uh, more of a little bump out here a little curve and the other difference is the new one has a square button for the gain selection, uh, which is more, again, tactile. So the uh, the three lines on it really give you a good grip, where the other one was just kind of like a cross pattern uh, between the two. So, yeah, 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 don't, there it is. All right, very good, very nice. So all the buttons have been upgraded as well. So uh, now, one of the things that also changed in between the two was the power output. So it again stayed at 121 milliwatts at 32 ohms in the single ended, but um, it went to 171 milliwatts in the balanced output. And it's so funny to be having one into the hand and one into the other. I mean, where this is a, a chonky bad boy, this is nice and light. So one of the things that they changed also is in the entire case is now a CNC machined uh, case and the back and the front or front and back uh, are a carbon fiber and inlaid into the CNC. And it reduced the weight by over half, uh, quite, quite noticeable. Though I do love the weight of this thing. 
and the factor, um, this is more transportable, right? It's, it's not going to weigh you down. So that changed quite a bit. Uh, you get a better signal to noise ratio also when you jump from the single ended to the 4.4 balanced, 125 dB over uh, then the four, the balance is 130 of signal to noise ratio, which is good. More signal, less noise. Um, so that uh, was the thing. And, and let's talk about the sound here for a second. And um, which is kind of funny, before I got these new ones in, I had my two, my dailies were the um, Truth Ear Shiro, and I got in the Simgot Do 4X. Now, when I did listening tests between these two dongles, honestly, I couldn't hear a difference between one to the other, A, B, A, B, back and forth. Um, and if there was a difference, it was so negligible. I, I, I honestly couldn't hear a difference between the two. So for me, these two sound exactly the same. Let's put away the truth here, shoe. You can't buy that anymore. Uh, now, versus, uh, I just want to do some sound uh, impressions between the two. Now, listening to the OG TP20 and the SimGot Do 4X, which is kind of funny because I was not expecting honestly anything. Uh, I really wasn't, but which is funny because I'm a believer in sources. My my Ibasso DX170 sounds different from my uh, X-Duo X-Duo 5, sounds different from my Shanling uh, UP5 dongle, and also um, my M8 DAP. So and I know that, so, I, but I wasn't, I don't know why, I was thinking dongles aren't going to change the sound too much from one to the other, but I was, I was wrong, honestly, I'll admit that, uh, because my impressions were these two. Now, I can hear a difference between the Shanling UP5 in an ESS, uh, that is a really nice uh, sounding um, very resolving little dongle, so a great little dongle. It's also pricey uh, up there as well. Now, listening to the TP20 and the um, the SimGot uh, Do 4X. Uh, well, actually, before I go into sound impressions, a couple things to note. Um, one, a the weight of this little guy. Some of my criticisms with the Do 4X was the little teeny LED indicator here really gets buried when you plug something into it. Um, so you couldn't really see the light on it and not too big a deal anyway, uh, where the EPZ has a LED on the back of it. Now, um, but, uh, and then the, it doesn't have a play pause button on the SIM gun and it, it just has two very, very flush buttons without markings. It's, I'm sorry to say, not a great design. Um, not thought out anyway. Uh, and at least with the EPZ, you know, you got a gain switch, uh, instead of having to press and hold these two buttons, um, and you can easily just look at it and tell which way you've got it, right? Uh, up is up gain, down is down gain. Uh, and the play pause button is really, really stand out, really uh, well, well thought out. So um, let me just check some. Okay, I'm back. Uh, I wanted to just check. I didn't actually know how much the uh, Do 4X was. So it's a bit of a shocker too. So. The original TP20, you can still now get under $50, uh, which is mind-blowing. Uh, the new one, uh, $57 on sale, regular $80. Bucks. Um, so even at regular price with the uh, Do 4X, how do they sound? Well, I'm not going to do a comparison to the old. Um, let's comparison to the new. Well, the old just 
is a better sounding dongle at 50 bucks with more features than to do 4x now uh let's uh, let's talk about the new tp20 pro and uh versus the old right so what i hear uh and i wasn't expecting a difference in sound either because it's just a newer model with uh, virtually the same specification, same chip, Cirrus Logic 43131, uh, dual chip in it. So something has obviously changed. Um, the new one is more resolving, clearly. Like it's, uh, there's a difference. The stage is better. Um, bass has more authority uh, and comes across uh, with the new one though, slightly more, because that's slightly more resolving, it almost sounds a little bit more um, forward in the vocals, but I think that's more to do with just the resol resolving power that comes through cleaner, um, for sure. So, and then again, you know, what was the, uh, the difference between this and, and this, uh, to me? The Do 4X sound soundstage sounds very compressed. Um, that was the biggest shocker and takeaway for me over the two dongles. Uh, using the same exact chip, um, the vocals actually have a bit of an edge on the Do 4X where they sound much smoother and more open um, than on, on the EPZ TP20 Pro. Uh, and it doesn't sound as balanced either in the overall frequency spectrum. So that really had to do with bass. I was listening to Queen uh, hijack my heart on the B side from Queen. And there's that uh, bass notes. Now, uh, I was listening to it on the Q1 uh, Pro EPZ. I, I'm, I'm in love with these under $50 IMs. That's a separate review. Um, and you could hear the sub bass go down with the EPZ, but you couldn't hear it playing the low notes. A uh, huge shocker with the Do 4X. Uh, and, uh, and it was like a wow kind of moment. I Again, I wasn't really expecting that much of a sound difference uh, between the two um, for a cheaper dongle. So that's what kind of threw me off. Um, so, and, and it was kind of funny. Uh, somebody commented on my review for the Do 4X and they said, do you think this is worth the price? And I honestly couldn't answer that question because um, the only other reference I had was a... Uh, two other dongles and that was the Shanling UP5 uh, which is way more expensive and an ESS and these two the Truthier Shiro and the Do 4X sounded the same to me so I was like well they're they're kind of the same price so it's really hard to give you an honest answer on that and now I can answer that honestly and I would say the Sim God Do 4X is totally not worth the money uh, not after hearing the original uh TP20 and certainly the not the TP20 uh, Pro. Now, uh, I also have, uh, which I'm going to do a separate review because this little bad boy also deserves some recognition, and that's the TP50. This one bumps you up uh, past a uh, hundred bucks, um, but a whole slew of features. Um, so before you buy a dongle. Uh, and if you're thinking about the TP20, you uh, if you want a single basic, um, you know, they're $56 on sale, $57. This is going to be double the price. If you're just looking for a, a simple one with play, pause, volume up, down, uh, you're good to go. Uh, absolutely. Uh, in this little guy. If you want something mo more full-featured, uh, then maybe wait for my review of this one. I'll hopefully get to that soon. It's an awesome little dongle. It's my go-to. The sound quality is uh, truly fantastic. Um, loving it very much. 
Um, that's all I'm going to say. I mean, it, it sounds good, and it's a great price, and it's pretty featured, full featured, built like a little tank, and not nearly as heavy as the old one. So, this is a tone-deaf monk. Mm. For now.